Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the city of Greensboro. The Neighborhood Development Department is co-sponsoring the 2019 Housing Summit in partnership with the Greensboro Housing Coalition. This year's theme is Prescription for Healthy Communities with a focus on how housing impacts child health. The summit will take place from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Wednesday, March 27th at George K's Event Center located at 2108 Cedar Fork Drive. Attendees will get to hear from and interact with experts on how housing affects our well-being. The goal is to help strategize about what we can do to improve our community through housing interventions, system change, and policy levers. The keynote speaker is Dr. Megan Sandal, the nation's leading expert on how housing impacts child health. Registration for the event is required. To reserve a seat, contact the Greensboro Housing Coalition at 336-691-9521. The city is soliciting 100 potential first-time home buyers interested in purchasing a home in Greensboro by December 31st. The hashtag 100 Homes campaign is seeking to convert Greensboro renters into home buyers. Additionally, this is an opportunity to rebuild East Greensboro in the areas recovering from last year's tornado. The campaign also promotes affordable home ownership through a partnership between the City and Housing Consultants Group, or HCG, which provides housing counseling services. The concept of hashtag 100 Homes is the brainchild of Sophia Crisp, Executive Director of HCG. The campaign evolved after working with tornado survivors who lost their home. Many were spending about $800 a month to rent substandard housing. Crisp says we can help them do better. It's a matter of changing behaviors and mindsets and creating opportunities we want to help anyone own a home in Greensboro. The resources are available for everyone who is eligible. HCG is working with local realtors and lenders to track Greensboro homes that are available, shown to potential buyers, and purchased. For more information about this campaign and home ownership, call Housing Consultants Group at 336 5530946 Planet GSO is a city initiative designed to spark community conversations about how Greensboro should grow and develop in the future. Your input will help the city create a new comprehensive plan or comp plan. A comp plan establishes a vision for the future of a city and then is used as a roadmap to guide a municipality's investments, development, and growth. Greensboro's current comprehensive plan is now 15 years old. The city still wants to hear from the community. The planning department has scheduled a citywide public workshop on Wednesday, March 20th at Central Library. This will give the public an opportunity to gather input on recently revised comp plan goals and a vision statement. More details and time of the workshop will be posted on the Planet GSO website. The website also includes ways to submit input for those unable to attend the March 20th event. Final steps in the comp plan process include city staff drafting specific strategies and policies for achieving the comp plan goals. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. Hi, I'm Kate Towery, a registered dietitian for Cone Health Nutrition and Diabetes Services. Do you pack your lunch each day? Maybe getting bored of the same old brown bag lunch? Maybe wondering, is this even healthy? Well, join me today for tips on packing a healthy, well-balanced meal that you and the kids are gonna enjoy. Let's get started. When creating a well-balanced lunch, we wanna include a few key components, and I like to use a very simple tool called my plate or the portion plate. First, we start with our grains or starches. This provides the body's favorite energy, um, which is gonna keep your brain sharp throughout work and school. Whole grains have the most fiber, which is very heart healthy. Those would include options like your whole wheat crackers, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, um, and brown rice. Next, we always wanna include a protein. This helps keep you full and satisfied throughout the day. 
Choose leaner or low-fat options like chicken, turkey, fish, and your vegetarian sources such as beans, nuts and seeds, eggs, and low-fat cheese. Lastly, we really want to try to fill up the rest of our plate with fruits and vegetables, aiming for color and variety because after all, we eat with our eyes first. And these foods have the most nutrition with the lowest amount of calories, so we can get big volume on our plate. They also contain very protective qualities like antioxidants that help keep us from getting sick, which is really important during back to school time. So I've prepared a couple of example meals that are gonna be fun and creative for you and the kids and definitely have that healthy balance. So the first one is a new take on the traditional deli sandwich. These are tortilla roll-ups. They're very simple to make. Um, I used whole wheat tortilla as our grain, lots of good fiber there. Spread it with some low-fat um, herb cream cheese and turkey slices for our protein. Also added a little bit of spinach. You could include some red peppers or pimentos for additional color. Um, fun little bite-sized sandwiches. We've then paired that with some carrots and grapes, so different textures here, get that color on the plate. And lastly, some unsalted pretzels, which I'm gonna pair with a natural peanut butter for additional protein and heart-healthy fats. Next up is one of my favorite things to do is cooking ahead a little bit on the weekend really goes a long way for a busy week. My preference, fix the protein. Today, I've created a salmon salad, similar to what you would bake for a tuna salad, chicken salad. You could even do an egg salad, and this would be a great protein dish to use throughout the week in a variety of ways, like on a sandwich or in a wrap or with crackers. Today, I've chosen to top the salad on a bed of greens. So the salmon salad, very simple. I use canned salmon, a little bit of low-fat mayonnaise. You could also use plain Greek yogurt. I did put some sliced almonds in there for crunch as well as the relish, lemon juice to cut the fishy taste, and lots of ground pepper. I've chosen spinach, but any kind of lettuce would work, romaine, iceberg, um, spring leaf. And we're just gonna top the salmon salad onto our bed of greens. I've also packed some tomatoes and red onions for color, so we'll put those on top as well as balsamic vinaigrette for the dressing, light Italian or some oil and vinegar would be another healthy choice, and some crackers for our grains and a little bit of crunch. I've also packed um, the shelf-stable fruit cups. Fruit cups are a great way to um, get your fruit serving in. However, I recommend choosing the ones in water or 100% juice. Um, the syrups have a lot of added sugar, and fruits are naturally sweet, so we don't need to add any more sugar to them. Lastly, whenever I get a little bored with my lunch options, I try to think back to something I really was excited about as a kid, and for me, that was Lunchables. So today, I've created a healthier version of a Lunchable. Um, instead of pepperoni, we've got turkey kielbasa, a lot lower in fat, still watch the sodium there. A couple ounces of some cheese, you could also do a spreadable cheese or a low-fat cheese if you're watching your heart health, and some whole grain crackers, whole wheat, or these are actually quinoa and millet. I've paired that with broccoli and cauliflower for our vegetables and a delicious dipping sauce of hummus. This is going to give a good punch of protein to keep you full, as well as fiber from those chickpeas. And our fruit, we've got some sliced green apples. If you are really into these dipping sauces like I was as a kid, the single serve ones are great, but if you want to go a little more financially and environmentally friendly, you can buy in bulk and just invest in some of these small containers. If you're thinking about taking your lunch more often, you may want to go ahead and invest in an insulated lunch bag as well as an ice pack. These are very simple. Just throw them in the freezer till frozen, put them in your lunch box the next day, and they're going to help keep your food cold that needs refrigeration for up to four to five, maybe even six hours. And that's going to help prevent the growth of bacteria and keep your food safe. Another option would be to take a juice box or yogurt or even grapes place these in the freezer till frozen cold, place them in your lunchbox the next day, and they're gonna keep your food cold as well, but they'll be thawed out and ready to enjoy by lunchtime. Also, don't forget the importance of hand hygiene. Wash your hands with warm soapy water every time before you handle or prepare fresh food to prevent the spread of germs 
And I also recommend taking a clean, damp towel and wiping out the inside of your lunchbox after every use. Um, if you're using your lunchbox pretty frequently, go ahead and wash it out with warm, soapy water and let it air dry about once a week. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you found some helpful tips to banish that brown bag boredom for you and your family. If you'd like more information, visit conehealth.com slash healthy eating. I'm Kate Towery. Enjoy your lunch. The Central Library will set the backdrop for an informative discussion about race and class in modern day society in celebration of Black History Month. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. A community discussion on black migration will be led by Dr. Armando Collins as part of Black History Month events hosted at the Greensboro Public Library. The discussion will take place at 6 p.m. on Monday, March 4th at the Central Library. Collins will reference Zora Neale Hurston's book, Bar Raccoon, the story of the last black cargo to explore race and class in contemporary America. Dr. Collins has the Digital Media Commons at UNCG. Beverly Burnett, president of the North Carolina Association of Black Storytellers, will also be in attendance. She will perform an excerpt from How It Feels to Be Colored Me. This is Burnett's one-woman show that reveals the complex life of celebrated African-American writer and folklorist Zora Neale Hurston. Burnett is the 2018 recipient of the Zora Neale Hurston Award. Participants will have the opportunity to record their own migration story after the program. These recordings will be permanently archived at the Greensboro History Museum. For more information on this and other library events, visit the library's website. The City of Greensboro's third cycle of participatory budgeting, or PB, is now underway. PB Greensboro idea collection meetings will take place until March 31st. Residents can submit an idea online or at one of the idea collection events that will be held across the city during the next two months. Participatory budgeting is a democratic process that allows residents ages 14 and older to help decide how to spend city funds totaling $500,000. Projects or programs are submitted during idea collection, then volunteers and city staff vet the ideas to turn them into viable projects. Votes are cast to determine which projects will be funded. PB Greensboro funds must be one-time expenditures spent for the public benefit on city-owned property. Refer to the full list of details and rules on the website. The types of projects and programs that can be funded are also listed on the website. Greensboro Participatory Budgeting Cycle 3 will identify projects or programs to be funded in the 2020-2021 fiscal year. The Greensboro Youth Council is collecting new and gently used formal wear and accessories for Camille's Closet and Theo's Threads. Donations will be accepted February 25th through March 22nd. These retailers provide free outfits to teens who otherwise might not be able to afford a gown or tuxedo for prom or other special occasions. Drop-off locations are located at various city facilities for your convenience. Students will be able to shop for clothes and accessories April 11th and April 12th. The types of formal wear needed include dresses sizes 16 and up, suits, dress shirts, slacks, and accessories such as shoes, ties, evening bags, bow ties, and costume jewelry. Donated items must have been purchased or worn between 2010 and 2018. Donated items must meet the following guidelines. Garments must be free of stains, snags, rips, and tears. All zippers, buttons, and snaps must be in good working condition. Accents such as beading or jewels must be intact. Items that do not meet these guidelines will not be accepted. For more information about making a donation or how to receive the formal wear, please call 336-373-4351 or visit the Greensboro Youth Council website. 
In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on Parker White, founder of Backpack Beginnings. When Parker White became a parent, she realized a sense of duty that sparked her interest in helping others and ignited her curiosity about the children in her community. Parker reached out to Guilford County Schools to learn about the unmet needs in the county's students and learned childhood hunger was one of the most prevalent issues. Parker says it's hard for kids to be successful and concentrate in school if they're hungry. She created Backpack Beginnings, a nonprofit organization dedicated to delivering child-centric services to feed, comfort, and clothe children in need. Parker thought she would help one school running the program out of her dining room and helping to nourish about 50 kids. Six years later, Parker and her cohort of 200 plus volunteers serve more than 6,000 children annually. Backpack Beginnings aims to meet all the basic needs of Guilford County youth by providing kid-friendly shelf-stable food to preschool and elementary school age children. This includes blankets, stuffed animals, books, hygiene products, and school supplies. The program also provides direct access to free and nutritious food for middle and high schoolers, along with school uniforms and clothing. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. Greensboro is committed to creating opportunities for young professionals through employment and leadership roles. Coming up after the break, learn how this group is encouraged to contribute by playing a role in leading our city. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Greensboro is considered to be a college town and that fact doesn't fall flat on community leaders. They regularly meet to discuss ways to tap into this sector of the population, hoping they will stay in the Gate City long term. Joining me now to tell us about Synergy and what it offers young professionals is Sarah McGuire. She is the director of Synergy Young Professionals. Hello, Sarah. Welcome to the show. Hey, Carla. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So tell me, what is Synergy Young Professionals and who is classified as a young professional? Sure. Synergy Young Professionals is a young professionals network. It is an initiative of Action Greensboro, which is a local nonprofit here in Greensboro. We are a sister organization to the Greensboro Chamber of Commerce. So you may see us out and about together with some chamber folks from time to time. Um, but Synergy serves as an organization for anyone who lives or works in the Greensboro area and falls between the ages of 21 and 40-ish. We don't card, okay. so anyone is welcome to join us if they'd like to. Um, and Synergy is a non-dues paying membership organization, so we invite anyone who kind of falls within that category and is interested to, to join us and check it out. Okay, that's a nice broad range of ages yes. that you've offered up. I like the 40-ish. <laughs> <laughs> now, what opportunities are available to young professionals in this area? We at Synergy try to offer a variety of options, understanding that um, young professionals have a variety of different needs. So we tap on professional development, personal development, um, social networking, leadership development, and we do that through a variety of regular programming that we have. Um, for instance, we offer lunch and learns once or twice a month, and those can be on a variety of different topics. Uh, we just had one on the participatory budgeting project here at Greensboro. Um, we've also had them on topics such as um, relationship building in the workplace. We've had them on um, what we call adulting 101 topics like first time home buying and how to consolidate your student loan debt. Um, so from that perspective of the lunch and learns, we really try to tap into all of the things that different young professionals might be interested in knowing more about. 
Um, we also have other things to offer young professionals that aren't during the lunchtime. We do a monthly social networking event called On Tap. Um, it's basically a happy hour. Anyone's welcome to come. Um, we change our location every month, so okay. come and enjoy an after work beverage with some new friends and old friends, colleagues. Um, and one thing that we launched this year that I'm really excited about is our Synergy Wellness Series. So it's for all the young professionals out there who like to exercise or are wanting to just be more fit. We've partnered with several different gyms in the area, so we offer a 30-minute class um, and then a 30-minute presentation on some wellness topics such as um, meal planning or mindfulness, and then there's time for networking afterwards too. So really trying to tap into different areas that folks might be interested in. Um, and then one thing that we um, focus on every year is our annual Lead Your City Summit, which is a leadership summit that's actually coming up in just a couple of weeks. Okay, and I was just getting to that. In addition to all the things that you do that focus on a fun factor, you do get serious and you want yes. the young professionals to think about leadership and the role they play in our community. Absolutely. So tell me a little more about Lead Your City. Sure. So Lead Your City started about five years ago. Um, on Thursday, March 7th, we'll hold our fifth annual Lead Your City Summit. It it is a day-long, affordable, and accessible professional development opportunity for young professionals in the area. Um, it, this year, the focus is going to be on health and wellness, which is something that we've been working on through our wellness series. And it's really just an opportunity for young professionals to take a day out of the office, um, learn a lot about what's happening in the community, take some time to connect with others, and then there's still some fun incorporated okay. in it too. Of course, of yes. course. Now, um, how do they register for the event sure. and what comes with that? Registration, um, you can handle that through our online Eventbrite site. You can reach that through the Facebook event or through our website, which is synergy.org. Mm -hmm. Registration is $35, which includes all sorts of things. Um, we are providing breakfast from Chez Janice, which is a wonderful French cafe in downtown Greensboro. Uh, lunch from Flame Broiler. It also comes with an entry to our networking reception at the end of the day, um, a professional headshot. We'll have a photographer on site. Um, and then, of course, all of the wonderful programming that the day will include. We um, have a keynote speaker joining us that will talk about healthy communities and how we as young professionals can um, contribute to the wellness of the city of Greensboro. Um, we'll also have some breakout sessions that touch on mental health, um, work-life balance, and then at the end of the day, we will have a really fantastic panel on um, workplace wellness um, and we'll have a variety of speakers from different industries that will be touching on that. It's nice that you're putting a wellness component into the conversation. A lot of people forget that until they get ready to retire and then they start focusing on their health and well-being. Yes, it's good to, to think about that in all aspects of our lives and all ages. So Absolutely. So as we wrap this up, what else do you have going on this year through Synergy that our young professionals can look forward to? Yes. So we have our regularly scheduled programming, our lunch and learns on TAPS. Um, this year we are also going to be partnering, partnering with the Guilford Nonprofit Consortium to offer some nonprofit board training for young professionals who are interested in taking their volunteerism to the next step and um, being a, a board member for nonprofits. We are also partnering with the Downtown Parks to promote the Food Truck Fridays, which will start in just a few weeks. So be on the lookout for some great food trucks coming up um, this spring and summer and into the fall. Um, and then we usually have a Making Connections event that happens in the fall, which is another great opportunity for young professionals to partner with some of the other leaders that are um, the movers and shakers in Greensboro. Okay, well you are very busy and we thank you for taking the time to stop by and A, tell us about Synergy, but also remind us about the Lead Your City Summit on March 7th. I'm sure that um, folks are going to get online and sign up for that. Yes. And I'm looking forward to the, yes. sum the summit. Do thank come back and see us. I will. Thank you so much, Carla. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little-known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN, and we also stream the meetings live on the city's website. Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building, located at 300 West Washington Street. 
The first meeting of the month includes public comments and special presentations. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month focus on public hearings and city business. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The King's Forest neighborhood is the recipient of Greensboro Beautiful's 2019 Neighbor Woods Community Tree Planting. Neighbor Woods will hold a ceremonial tree planting in honor of Arbor Day at 10 a.m. on Saturday, March 16th at King's Forest Park. The neighborhood suffered massive losses to its tree canopy last year when a tornado and hurricane cut a path of destruction through the area, downing and damaging several trees. The trees will be replanted both in the park and throughout the neighborhood. Kings Forest Park is located in northeast Greensboro off of Phillips Avenue. Greensboro is a Tree City USA community, and Greensboro Beautiful has been helping to beautify the city for the past 50 years. Neighbor Woods is funded by private donations and relies on a partnership with the City of Greensboro and the North Carolina Cooperative Extension Service. For more information, visit Greensboro Beautiful's website. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Josh. This weekend, we celebrate a beloved children's author and invite you to join a community concert. Kick off your weekend by heading downtown for First Friday, a special night downtown. Explore new art exhibits, listen to live music, and dine on delicious food as we enjoy all our amazing city has to offer with extended hours of 6 to 9 p.m. on the first Friday of each month. Learn more at firstfridaygreensboro.org. Theodore Geisel, more commonly known as Dr. Seuss, was born on March 2, 1904. This year, we will celebrate his birthday on Greensboro's first Friday. All across the United States, libraries celebrate the day as Read Across America slash Dr. Seuss Day and usually offer a variety of children's events. But why should kids have all the fun? The Greensboro Public Library is teaming with Zito Wine and Cheese Shop to present an adult version of Dr. Seuss Day. Come and read your favorite Dr. Seuss book or part of one. There will be celebrity readers and a few surprises. Donations will also be accepted for the Greensboro Public Library Foundation. Read more about this and other Dr. Seuss events happening all weekend long at greensborolibrary.org. Speaking of, celebrate the birthday of Dr. Seuss at your local library on Saturday. Glenn McNary Branch Library will host a Dr. Seuss guessing game all day long, so stop by anytime to play. For a complete list of events, go to greensborolibrary.org. On Sunday, the Philharmonia of Greensboro hosts Pillow Pops concert with special guests, Dance Project, The School at City Arts. Bring the kids, pillows, and blankets for a fun introduction to the orchestral music. The Philharmonia of Greensboro and the Dance Project will present Ravel's Mother Goose Ballet in this family-friendly event. Admission is free and donations are accepted. The event takes place from 3 to 4.30 p.m. at Lindley. Check out GreensboroPhilharmonia.org for additional information. Join the Carolina Theater for an afternoon of song provided by you. This free community event invites singers and lovers of song at every skill level and ability imaginable to gather at the Carolina Theater for an afternoon of musical community celebration starting at 2 p.m. on Sunday. Pre-show will be provided by the UNCG Spartones and Gate City Ramblers. Singing will begin at 3 p.m. For a list of songs that will be sung together, visit carolinatheater.com. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out more about what's happening on the town. Welcome back. The city of Greensboro has 
23 departments committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in today's department spotlight. The Greensboro Public Library will host its 10th annual Book Lovers Social. The event will take place from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday, February 27th at the Central Library. The Book Lovers Social offers bibliophiles the opportunity to connect with fellow readers and learn about local book clubs. The free event will include refreshments, music, door prizes, and book-related games. Scuppernong Books will be on hand to set up a display of exciting new book titles. The Book Lovers Social is also an ideal opportunity to vote on selections for the library's 2019 book club collection. The Central Library is located downtown at 219 North Church Street. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Greensboro Transit Authority for being the first municipal transit system in North Carolina to deploy all electric battery operated buses. Governor Roy Cooper joined local leaders to celebrate and commend the city of Greensboro on this major accomplishment. The officials had an opportunity to ride the new buses built by South Carolina based Proterra. The rechargeable buses use no fuel, no fossil fuels, and are expected to cost less in operational and maintenance expenses than a traditional diesel bus. Greensboro has six buses in its fleet and four more are on the way. GTA plans to transition its entire 50-plus vehicle fleet to battery electric buses as the old buses are retired. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.